you doing? Today is the last day of 2014 and one of our subscribers, Neil, has asked me to show how to make a formed joint. Not using a coupling but forming the pipe to make a joint and solder it from start to finish. So okay Neil, this one's for you. Right but the first thing you need to know is that the pipe must be um, a cut end, not a not an end cut by a, um, a pipe cutter because when a pipe cutter cuts it, it forms, um, you know, like a bevel, which is okay for if you're using the push fit. But <coughs> if we want to put our former in, it won't go if it's been cut by a cutter. So it has to be a, an end cut by a saw, so that it's a square end, and then that the form will fit in them and then <coughs> you just tap your former in like that and as we hit this former it'll expand the pipe so we get an hammer and I always use the side of the hammer like that because if you're using <coughs> pardon me if you're using that that in like that and you're not so experienced, you're going to catch your hand or your thumb, right? If you do it that way, it's less likely to happen. So I do it that way. And then you knock that in. When the copper's cold, it won't form as easily as what it does when it's warm. So that's what you've got to do. <coughs> Keep tapping away. Now there is a, a machine you can buy to do this, but the machines are very expensive. And you won't do this all that often because a bag of couplings is only a couple of quid, you know. For two quid you can buy a bag of 20 couplings and save all this mess in. But this is handy if you run out of couplings and you need to form a joint. When I was a lad, everybody got one of these because the, the, the employers were too tight to buy couplings. So we had to do this. Now you don't. Right, I've more or less gone full socket there. All the way down. So what I want to do now is just slightly tap that edge, just stretch the, the copper a little bit, so it's a bit easier to get out. And then you've formed a socket. Right, so your next piece of Copper, I'll just slot into there like it's a coupling. Okay, so now we're going to solder that. So now we're going to solder that. We've got two pieces of wood here to to um, get it across. Just going to clean the copper with a bit of wire wool. Clean both parts. This is just to get any dirt off and. Um, Copper tends to oxidise when you leave it. You know that's nice shiny copper. That's not oxidised. But if you leave it somewhere, it gets a little brown colour, and it's better to get that off. So here are our flux. This is Laco flux. We only need to really to solder that bit because we'll put the into the socket and twist it. So now you've got its flux all the way around. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> got a bit of a cold coming or going, whichever. 
right, so now we're going to solder it. And we're going to get this part warm. And you'll see when, when this gets warm, the flux will bubble. And when the flux starts to bubble and spit, that's when it's time to put your solder on. Now I always bend the solder like that so I can get right around to the back. You know, if, you, if you've got it straight, you get to the top, but to get to the back makes it awkward. Just by putting a little bend on it like that, makes it easier to go around there. Right, here comes the heat. Now, it starts to spit. Just try first. See, it didn't run then, so it's toss it off. Try then now. Right, let's That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Just let that set, and then get a, a cloth. Wipe off the flux residue. And that's formed a joint. Okay Neil, hope you've learned from that. We'll see you around.